Now, recently when uh, uh, American troops were killed in a drone strike in Jordan, uh, President Biden said, uh, and I quote, the United States will hold all those responsible to account at a time and in a manner of our choosing. Um, now, tomorrow, if the Indian prime minister were to make the same statement against India's enemies, would the Western leaders and media extend the same understanding and support? Well, that's a good question. I mean, it may depend on what enemies we're talking about here, right? I mean, uh, if we're talking about, uh, you know, let's say a, a horrific terrorist attack uh, in India carried out by Islamist terrorists, I think that you'd have a lot of support. Uh, you definitely would have a lot of support from the U.S. and its Western allies and partners in uh, showing solidarity with India and pledging whatever support um, is, 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 is requested. But you know, it's all very relative. And I think this gets into some interesting questions about the nature of U.S.-India relations, right? I mean, they certainly see eye to eye on a number of shared threats and shared challenges, whether you're talking about China's growing role in the world, or whether you're talking about Islamist terrorists, or whether you're talking about, you know, a very different non-traditional kind of threat, like climate change. But you know, there's always going to be other examples, I think. And, and this, this really has come out, uh, you know, in, in recent years and really in recent months with, with the Khalistan issue um, and the way in which we've seen um, the relationship impacted by India's concerns about uh, Khalistan, um, Khalistanis based in the United States, based in Canada, for that matter. You know, the U.S. certainly does not view Khalistanis as threats and certainly not in the same way that it views Islamist terrorists. But of course, for India, it's a very different story. I mean, I don't need to tell you about the history going back to the, the 70s, 80s and into the early 90s. And I've written about this. And I think that it's, it's important to acknowledge this disconnect, uh, even in a very close partnership like the U.S.-India relationship. And there's going to be things where the two sides don't see eye to eye. And part of a strong partnership is is working through those issues. You know, the U.S. government, for good reason, was very upset um, about uh, this alleged um, attempted assassination, um, again, allegedly orchestrated by an Indian official. Um, but, you know, I think what's heartening is that unlike in the Canada case, you saw U.S. officials take this up privately quietly behind the scenes with Indian interlocutors, not going public about it, not making it into a big political issue. And I think that's encouraging. I think that's a nice reflection of, of the U.S.-India relationship, uh, quite quite frankly. But yeah, you know, your question is an interesting one. And uh, you know, the answer to it, it, it just really depends on what enemies we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So far as the U.S. is concerned, Certain inputs were given to us as part of our security cooperation with the United States. In so far as Canada is concerned, no specific evidence or, inf or inputs were provided to us. So the question of equitable treatment to two countries who have one of whom has provided inputs and one of whom has not, does not arise. India's most wanted terrorists are dropping like flies in Pakistan. Not one not two, and not even the dirty dozen. It's actually 20 and counting. But the question is, who is killing India's most wanted terrorists in Pakistan? Are these Indian secret agents, as some may want to argue, or as Pakistan's ISI tried to tell the world that these are death squads of India at large? Or is there a more sinister ISI game plan at play? Eliminate the terrorists who are now way past their use-by date. They may be in the public eye. They may be on the list of the Financial Action Task Force and other agencies that track Pakistan state-sponsored radical Islamist terror. And that is why eliminate some terrorists and have a new crop of terrorists ready to bleed in India.